I went to Blockchain Live in Dubai. Let's talk about it. It was a two-day event and it didn't disappoint. Lots of projects were exhibited at this event and I found seven of them quite interesting and I'll share them with you guys in this video. As you may know, getting a visa from Nigeria to Dubai isn't exactly a walk in the park. But I managed to secure a 96 hour visa giving me four nights and three days to dive into the crypto scene in Dubai. Check out some amazing projects and let's just say it was an adventure from start to finish. Now, I could do a vlog to tell you guys about my journey, the food, the places I went to and how I got around. But I just want to go straight to the event. The event was held at the Festival Arena in Festival City which felt like a buzzing crypto carnival. It was a two-day conference with a main stage, a coin stage, and a bustling exhibition floor packed with boots showcasing projects from around the world. Of course, I made it my mission to explore as many of these projects as I could. What I did first was to go around the different boots. Now, look at this guy. He's also from Nigeria. I knew this from the second day when I had a conversation with him. Anyway, after going around, I went to the main stage, then decided to go again back to the exhibition floor and get some interview. Now, something happened and I realized it quite late. I bought this device. It's called the DJI Pocket 2. It is an awesome camera. Now, this video you see here was taken at the airport's using the pocket 2. Look at what happened. See, if I press here three times, the camera switches direction. If I push it once, it switches from video to photo mode. So let me press it again. Photo to video, video to photo. Now, I didn't know that at the start of the interview, I had mistakenly pushed this button and it was now in photo mode. Then I went ahead and did a lot of interviews but later found out at the end of the day that I was actually taking terrible pictures instead of recording videos. So while I can't show you guys all the moments, I'll do my best to walk you through what I learned from this project. However, I'll show some clips that I got while going around. So the first one is Max Profit. Max Profit is a crypto academy and more. On the website, it says everything you need to earn on cryptocurrencies. So they have courses to get you up to speed with crypto knowledge. They have tools to help you scan the market for arbitrage opportunities, earning opportunities, and in-depth wallet analysis. They also have the crypto virtual card and a custodial exchange for crypto trading. Now to get access to all these, you have to pay. I have not, however, used their tools, so I don't know if their claims are true i have tried out their cost demo which you can get by scanning this code here i would say they can do better i can probably say that we did a much better job at afibi.com now the second project i interviewed is called crypto cash crypto cash basically allow you to convert your crypto to physical cash there are two physical components to help you achieve this the paper and the small handheld device called ATM. Say you have $100 and want to print $10 on a paper. You send $10 to the ATM then use it to print the keys to the paper. Then you can spend the paper. If you want to make the paper useless, you can just go ahead and redeem the $10 from the paper by scanning the printed code. So with crypto cash, you can actually go to the party and make it rain. You know, investors vibes. But of course, there are obvious issues with this model. When your cash is exposed, anyone can redeem the value of the money without your knowledge. The merchants who accept this paper for payment will have to confirm that each note he receives has value. I mean, who has the time for that? If you think about it, what really is the necessity of crypto cash? You guys can actually let me know in the comment section what you think about it. Now, the next two projects have noble causes. They have huge potential, but at the same time, 
they might not take off. One of them is called dress feel. If you're an artist who draws things or a fashion designer, then this is for you. It basically involves a fashion designer coming up with a design and minting it as an NFT on the platform. Then an artist also do the same with his artwork. Dress Studio combines the two, then sews the physical clothing, which is now sold to customers and the profit is split between the artist, the fashion designer and Dress Studio. So if you're an artist or a fashion designer with many design, you can start minting them here on Dress Studio. How big can this go? I think the fashion people will have to tell me also in the comment section. In the website, it shows that Dress Studio has over 130 garments made from this. Over 5,000 artists and designers have used the platform and 30,000 users are currently on the platform. Me personally, I think Dress Studio can make their website more fun and friendly looking. If you look at these pictures, you can see some pictures, but these are actually videos. I thought I was making videos, but I snapped these pictures that are not, you know, I lost that interview. The next project is a noble quest that every nation and institution needs, but I fear it might not even come to light. It is called Represent. I had a long chat with the two Canadians in this boot, but unfortunately, it was a picture and, you know, I lost that interview. Represent is the leading future of decentralized governance and identity. So this is how it works. Users can create an account and verify it on Represent. This will give them a digital identity on the blockchain, taking into account their ID and their location. With this, they can vote on different issues. Imagine millions of people registered on this platform. Votes can be cast fast, inexpensive and accurate. Nation state can use it and local governments can also use it since the data takes into account the location of the voter. Companies can use it to get more accurate survey. Knowing the true mind of the people through this platform will lead to better governance and product. But that is where the fun ends. How do you get people to register on Represent? If you guys remember what coin, they give people the coin as an incentive to collect their digital identity or to digitize their identity. And even at that, some people greatly oppose them. You can read about articles about governments um, charging them with different things. Represents, on the other hand, requires you to pay about $10 to get your identity digitized. And you have to pay blockchain transaction fee each time you cast votes. So it's going to require a morality campaign for human betterment to get people to actually spend their own money to register on the platform. Because unfortunately, Represent does not have the funding to subsidize users verification or incentivize users registration. Secondly, supposing everyone is registered, it will be a hard sell to get nation states to use represent because most nation states prefer a system they can rig. So I think represent best fits non-governmental institutions that want to use it to obtain data to better sell their product basically. So here you have it. These are the few projects I interviewed the very first day. And I ended my day by taking an Indian boat cruise. <laughs> now guys, I mentioned seven projects in the beginning of this video and I've only talked about four. What about the rest? On the second day, one of the companies I interviewed will pay you for traveling. Another one promises to earn you huge return on your capital and the last wants to make your transaction on the Tronix ecosystem really cheap. If you want to watch that video, then go ahead and click here.